Hello and welcome to VOS Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Vungani. Thank you so much for joining us today. On the show this week, Fespaco is back in Burkina Faso and a Bob Marley musical gets the green light. Let's begin the show. And we start with the Fespaco Film Festival in Ouagadougou where the Angolan film Air Conditioner is in the running for the main award. Our Myra de la Salette spoke with the film's producer, George Cohen. Check it out. Filmmakers, producers, and fans gathered in Burkina Faso for a week to honor and award the best African movies of the last year. George Cohen, an Angolan film producer who co-founded the independent Gerasao Edi, described the atmosphere in Ouagadougou. Uh, Ouagadougou is one of the few African cities that still breeds cinema. This is seen at various levels, from statues of the directors in the main streets and avenues, but also the atmosphere around the festival. You see ads on buses and everything else. One of the things that amazes me the most here is the place cinema occupies in the city of Ouagadougou and how we have an obligation to make cinema a little more democratic in our countries. Cinema cannot be a luxury. Cinema has to be seen on a large scale. It has to be seen, shared up close, in the neighborhoods, and we have to find ways to make it happen. Air Conditioner premiered in 2020, and since then it has won at least five international awards. It has been a very successful film, I'd say. What do you expect for the competition in Ouagadougou? Having air conditioning and competition at one of the most emblematic film festivals on the continent is a great honor, and that alone is a victory. We already have enough reasons to celebrate. We also have the opportunity to meet other African filmmakers and beyond who are currently producing the most relevant and irreverent content with a very strong aesthetic and intentionality. In Angola, we just received the UNITEL MOVE Award for Best Feature Film. It is always great when we are recognized internationally and receive this warmth at home to be celebrated in our country. So I think air conditioning has made this journey both internationally and nationally, and I hope we'll continue to show it for much longer. Is anything new coming? Any surprise for Angolan and African film fans? There are many surprises. Angolan cinema is alive, and Jerasa Eti is undoubtedly an important player in the cinema that is currently being made. By the end of the year, we will release another feature film with the direction and signature of Eric Clava, who is also a director of photography and who wrote Air Conditioning with Fradik. It will not be a sequel to Air Conditioner, but I can say the title. It's a movie called Our Lady of the Chinese Shop. We are very excited, and we hope it has such a good, challenging, amazing journey as air conditioner. Recently, Netflix announced a partnership with UNESCO to give $75,000 grants to six filmmakers from sub-Saharan Africa to produce short films. How do you see Africa cinema taking space or getting the opportunity to show itself in the mainstream? It's very important that we take advantage of all the opportunities that are out there. It's another exciting project. Right now, if we look at the last two years, we had Angolan films in different media, whether it's Netflix or other digital platforms. We have to continue working on all these channels. It brings us many opportunities. Something that has also become a little more democratic is the means of production. Today, it is already possible to produce at a slightly lower cost, and all of this has to be taken advantage of, and we also have to invest in the stories. It's a project to praise, it's important, but I think we need to keep producing. Air Conditioner, director Fradik's drama set in Luanda, was named best film at both the Luxor African Film Festival in Egypt and at the Imagine Science Film Festival hosted online. The African Studies Association named it Film of the Year. 
And still in Ouagadougou, VOS Wilkins brings us a Bokinabe director that is documenting a nursery for the infants of sex workers. Check it out. Mamune Sano is a documentary film director from Bobo Di Lasso, Burkina Faso, Second City. In 2019, he made a film which is to be screened at the Pan-African Film and Television Festival of Ouagadougou, or FESPACO, which begins on Saturday. Night Nursery follows the story of an older woman who runs a nighttime home for sex workers' children in Bobo Di Lasso. Sanu says he wants Night Nursery to humanise sex workers. The idea for me is to show another image of these sex workers, which is very rarely seen. I know that here at home and in the rest of Africa, this profession is frowned upon, but it is also the oldest profession in the world. When we see these girls, people say they are bad people because they are sex workers. Fezpaco has been running since 1969, and this year will feature films from around 30 African countries in its official selection. Cinema professionals and cinephiles travel from all over Africa and beyond to attend. FESPACO is one of the biggest African film festivals, and for me to be selected and represent Burkina Faso in the documentary film section will mean this film will be seen by the whole world, not just Africans. The director of FESPACO says that this year the event will also host the African international film and TV market, known as MICA, for the first time. Because this year the MICA will be held here at FESPACO, we have invited platform leaders. I prefer not to mention names who will come to Wagadogio to find new projects that are in post-production and also films that are already finished but not scheduled for FESPACO so that they can fit their platforms. Last year, FESPACO, which usually happens every two years, was cancelled due to COVID-19. Burkina Faso is also in the midst of a conflict with terror groups linked to Islamic State and Al-Qaeda. Burkina Faso's culture minister says it's important the festival goes ahead anyway. It is a challenge for the Burkinabe to continue to be able to revive this Africa cinema every two years, which is the cinema through which we can see the vision of Africans and the people who live on this continent. And I believe that all those who preceded me made sure that this cinema and all those who lived here in Burkina Faso found a common point of the African people. As for Sanu, he's hoping Night Nursery could receive an award and the recognition it needs to win a wide audience. Henry Wilkins for VOA News, Ouagadougou, Burkina Faso. And there are more African films screening at a festival in Silicon Valley. The VOA's Grace Oyenobi reports that more than half the movies showing there are directed by women. The festival's founding director, Chiki Wofia, says most films about Africa or Africans impose a foreign perspective that blurs more accurate perceptions and interpretation of the continent and its people. These foreign lenses and foreign narratives of Africa continue to perpetuate stereotypes of Africa. We want to make sure that the voice, the point of view that is coming across, belongs to the people that own the story. Two directors whose films were screened spoke about the festival's impact on their thinking. Hetiban Hill crafted America a love letter to Brian, Leslie, and Michelle about the quest for justice and equality. Allow me to like myself, so excuse me if I can't find the breath to sit down and talk to you. I love this festival. It has set the bar of how I want to um, present my work. This is the hub for that. Mahina Mathieu directed Fly is about two Haitian friends who flew to Canada after the devastating 2010 earthquake in their country. Déplacer d'Haïti à venir au Canada, c'est un privilège. C'est un privilège que je vais jamais. It won documentary short category. Mes parents de m'avoir offert parce que j'ai accès à des choses auxquelles j'aurais jamais eu accès. Hollywood and California and United States and the world in general 
hasn't been that good representing um, black people, African people, uh, people of African descent or African diaspora. So I think that this festival brings a new type of lens and narrative that is key to understanding better our communities. The festival awarded its highest honor, 2021 cultural icon to Hollywood actor and director, Antari Moini, for his dogged commitment to uplifting Africa's image through the creative arts. He has said in films such as Blood Diamond and the TV series The Shy. I am beyond thrilled to receive this award today. And for me, this is one of those you know, moments where you get to sit back and reflect and give gratitude for, you know, being able to do what we do. He said he hopes the festival continues to grow and extend and uh, continue to nurture uh, the future generations of African filmmakers. The need for the festival persists, founder on Wafia says. You can use the arts in general, and in our case films, to really build and weave community. You can use films to provoke thought. You can use films to draw people together into dialogue. Festival vendors sold colorful jewelry, artwork and other tangible evidence of the African creativity captured on screen. Grace Oyenubi for Viewer News. Now, as you heard in Myra's interview earlier in the show, Netflix is launching a partnership with UNESCO to fund six young African directors with $75,000 each to make films for the streaming giant. Ben Amadasun is the head of original content and acquisition for Netflix in Africa. The idea of the initiative is, you know, to find, you know, great talent, you know, to look at, you know, great folk, folk tales, which in Africa um, is a big part of our heritage and culture, where folk tales have been kind of um, handed down in terms of our storytelling for many, many years. So we're looking for the, you know, the talent that we bring on to this, um, to the service, you know, that you know, are going to actually reimagine some really powerful folks, folk tales from all across uh, the continent. Amadasun told AFP that Netflix is working to establish itself on the continent by investing in young talent. We want the talent to actually you know, find uh, folk tales that they actually love uh, or they feel there's an important message and learning you know, uh, that, that is applicable to their life and their world. Um, and being able to just, you know, reimagine that in, into, a, uh, into a short film. UNESCO said the new initiative was partly motivated by the desire to preserve certain traditions in danger of being forgotten as the COVID-19 pandemic continues to prevent cultural gatherings. Young filmmakers aged 18 to 35 can pitch ideas for the competition until November 14th. The cast and director of Bob Marley's musical Get Up, Stand Up are thrilled that their show is finally going ahead. The show which celebrates the Jamaican music icon from his life of poverty to becoming an international star has been six years in the making. Directed by Clint Dyer, Get Up, Stand Up stars Arinza Kene as the reggae star. Kene, who has been attached to the project since the start, is delighted to be back on the stage following a hiatus due to the pandemic. It feels incredible to be back on stage. It feels absolutely dreamy. Um, also a little bit uh, emotional, you know, because it's been a while, you know. Um, the stage is one of my homes, you know, and to kind of uh, have to put it on pause for a year and a half is uh, <laughs> it's hard to do, you know. Um, so it's good, and, and audiences as well are loving it. It's, it. We've had packed houses every night, and it's uh, it's it's quite a thing. It, you, live performance is irreplaceable. Get Up Stand Up began previews at the Lyric Theatre on October the 1st. Opening night is set for October the 20th. And with that, we come to the end of our show today. I want to thank you for hanging out with me. My name is Jackson Vungani. For more entertainment news, remember to check us out at VOANews.com. We are also on all social media platforms, on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube, where you can watch our videos. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, goodbye, everyone. <laughs>